Hey, this is Chris Caffrey from Trans Siberian Orchestra and Sabotage, and you are listening to the podcast. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. <clears throat> Yeah, as you just heard, we have calling from the United States, uh, Chris Caffrey. And I'm really excited to have him here on the broadcast. Hi, Chris, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm uh, pretty much doing the same as everybody in 2020. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing as good as I can, let's put it that way. <laughs> That's very, very relatable, um, I think, for all of us, um, as you just said. Um, but yeah, despite this very, very weird and very crazy year, um, there is something going on uh, in your musical life with trans and Orchestra. And uh, yeah, we want to talk a little bit about that because um, in a couple of days, actually on Friday, uh, December 18th, there's going to be a big, big streaming show. And you already had a little teaser out. Um, so what can we expect from that? Well, I mean, this is going to be something completely... I, I always It's funny. I say to people, I said, it's going to be TSO. It's going to be exactly the same, but completely different. <laughs> Because it's, we're, we're going to be doing the TSO show, and we're going to have the story and the, the narration from the Christmas Eve and other stories record, and we're going to have the music, and we're going to be playing for the fans, but... Everybody's going to be in their living rooms instead of a concert hall. So it's um, it's something that was really important for us to be doing this because every year for the last 21 years, this would have been 22, TSO has been touring in November and December. So not only has the band itself become the band's family at the holidays, but these fans – we become a part of their holiday celebrations every year and a part of their lives. And, you know, a lot of people have reunited with, with people in their family they never saw through TSO on our concerts. And it's just, we've become such a huge part of people's lives. There are people that I know that have seen us 20 years in a row or, or, you know, started 10 years and come every year. So we didn't want to not tour. I mean, we were hoping in the beginning when this started that, November and December was going to be far enough away <laughs> that uh, we could we could still make it. And when I spoke to management back in March and April. They were giving me a date of, well, we'll try to hold out till June and let people know. And hopefully by you know July or August, things are cleared up and we could tour. And then it just got into August and we couldn't. But through all of that, we wanted to find a way to still do something. And this was the best thing that we could do and it's a really great production there's a a lot of the bells and whistles that you see at tso shows and the the lights and the lasers and, and things like that but um it's like i said it's the same but different we um are enjoying putting it all together we're being very very safe you know everybody all the time is wearing masks and and we're heavily tested and we're still amongst ourselves still taking that extra precaution because like people like me i take care of my mother and, and a lot of us want to see our families for for christmas and and we don't want to get to that point to where any of us go back home and and can't do that so it's been a very important thing for our management and our production companies and everybody involved that we did this the right way and i'm really impressed with how everybody's gone above and beyond and that's every member of the band and every person that's working and everybody's really been good i mean we um are pretty proud of the fact that every time we go and and uh get the testing done that nobody shows up positive and and we're still like i said taking it very seriously but it's it's going to be a tso concert like i said you're just uh getting it live in your in your living room instead of on the stage so it's um something i think that that's going to go down as a, a really special part for for our lives and everybody else is involved yeah that sounds uh, super super intriguing and uh, we actually have a um access code uh, to stream that live event to give away 
um, today. Oh, awesome. Yeah, um, and um, we are the the this episode is gonna drop on Monday, um, December fourteenth, and then you guys out there, you will have until Tuesday, November fifteenth, um, midnight European uh, time. Uh, to comment your favorite Trans-Siberian Orchestra or Sabotage and or Sabotage song. Um, and then we'll do a raffle and we will be announcing the vi winner on um, on December 18th, actually, um, on our, our very own streaming show that we do with the Prox Space. That's 8 p.m. Central European time. And then uh, you guys will go on... Uh, on on air so to speak at 8 p.m um eastern standard time right that's gonna be 2 a.m in the night to sun saturday here in yeah. europe <laughs> so it's a little bit complicated with the time zones of course but we i think uh, i'm pretty sure we'll manage it we will also um um we will have this uh competition already uh, announced or th it's not a competition it's a it's a raffle it's a giveaway right uh, we will have yeah. this announced at, at, on Saturday so tomorrow already uh, before the, the the episode here drops it's gonna be like a, a a little extra incentive for the for the people who are listening to this episode on Monday already um, so yeah we're excited to uh, to have this little giveaway um, for our listeners and for our proc space readers um, now, as I said, we are we are based in Europe, and um, of course we have a lot of listeners in Europe, but also in the United States. But um, I think, yeah, of course, the Trans Siberian Orchestra um, was always pretty much focused on the United States um, since the very beginning, and uh, so I think a lot of uh, there's um, you you guys are not as as um, popular or, yeah, not, not as many people here in Europe know about you uh, compared to the United States. Um, and um, one other thing, um, yeah, I wanted to mention is that um, the full back catalog of Trans-Siberian Orchestra is now available here in Europe on every streaming um, service again. And you can also get the uh, Christmas trilogy in a special box set. Sounds like a nice Christmas present, right? Um, yeah, it's a lot. That that's a lot of fun to listen to. And um, actually, the the uh, first Christmas TV special that we did, the Ghost of Christmas Eve, was done, I believe, the year of our very first tour, which was. Um, in 1999 that was was on television and that was the last time that um this holiday music from tso was played together with me al johnny lee and jeff together on uh in the month of december because when tso split into east and west coast tours yeah right al had always went out the other way so it's really exciting for me to be working together with those guys again i mean tso we did the Beethoven's Last Night tours and that band played together, but this time of the year, this is the first time in in, in decades where we we have a chance to play together with that. And and last night there was a a charity viewing of the Ghost of Christmas Eve that went online, and I was watching that special again. And uh, it, it there's a lot of really special things in Paul O'Neill's stories, and it, it's a lot of a lot of fun to watch. And and you'll see that with this live stream where we have the narration and the stories in there so it's it's going to have the whole feel of a of a TSO rock theater kind of thing in your in your living room as well and we're we're excited about that so, sounds sounds great you just uh, already talked a little bit about the history of Trans Siberian Orchestra and um, of course the history is uh, connected to sabotage uh, very very closely and uh, so I a, as a long time Sabotage fan I, I, I was um, I, I got into Sabotage after um, yeah you guys were focused like started focusing on on TSO because I was like I grew 
grew into heavy metal when I or yeah progressive metal when I was starting to yeah starting to explore this this kind this kind of music when I was 14 15 so uh, obviously I discovered Sabotage retrospectively at the very beginning of the new century so in 2001 2002 2003 and um yeah I was I was that was one of the main bands that I was uh, th that, on one hand, spoke very, very directly to me because I was uh, I had a classical upbringing, like uh, with classical music, and then I discovered metal and prog metal and and this uh, combination of uh, classical music and metal. Sabotage did in a, in a very very unique way, which I really. Uh, enjoy it um but i it, it was uh so so because of that it, sabotage is kind of a very very um nostalgic band for me when i listen to uh, sabotage uh it, it's so nostalgic for me for my you know for my youth and stuff um but it's also one of the bands that i was most uh kind of bummed bummed out on that that uh i never got the chance to see you guys live <laughs> Um, and well, five years ago you played together again, um, and uh, in Wacken, and nonetheless. So, um, what other perfect ways? I, I wanted to ask you about that show. I saw it here in Germany on TV. Unfortunately, I couldn't go to Wacken because it's uh, uh, at the very other uh, uh, at the other side of Germany. Uh, but that was such a huge, huge production. And I, I, I'm curious, how how was it for you to play Wacken with TSO and Sabotage simultaneously on two huge stages? That was a really fun show. I mean, we were looking forward to getting back over there so much as, as Sabotage. I mean, I personally would fly over and play a Sabotage show tomorrow. So I, I miss that band as much as people, you know, miss seeing it or ones that have never had a chance to see it. So we... We had this put together. I remember getting the phone call about it, that we were going to do it, but I did not know exactly how it was going to work till we started rehearsing it. And this was something that Paul had, had put together in his mind. He always has a lot of different ideas that almost seem impossible when you hear them at first, but he had a way of putting them together. And, and we spent a month rehearsing for that show. And we were in a studio at first, and Sabotage was in one room, and the TSO uh, part that was going to be TSO on that stage was in another room. So the, the, the idea was Sabotage would get on a stage and play, then TSO would play, and then we'd play both stages together. So we were rehearsing in one room, and then the other band was in the other I played a few songs on the TSO stage, but I had just finished with the Sabotage one and went back. So how it was working is we had in-ears on and there was counts so that both bands would be playing at the same time. I mean, you because you obviously could not see the other stage. Yeah. So we basically had audio in our ears that was recorded of, of Al kind of conducting us through our ears. And he had a microphone on his side that was there just in case our audio and the ears didn't work and we needed to go beyond it to just playing without the clicks or anything like that. But it was a fun thing to put together. We got out of that studio in about three weeks and we were well, actually, we might've been two weeks and we went into a rehearsal room for a week, a big warehouse and two bands were set up on the floor with the monitors that we were flying over the monitor boards and the sound boards and uh we just rehearsed it there like kind of like we were on a stage but we never really played it on a stage till we got there we were supposed to do a long sound check the night before but it, the weather was really bad so we couldn't so the very first time we had a chance to play that show was that show oh so goodness. it was really really different and the two stages together it just it worked so well but it was a huge production we flew over to arena stages of, of gear and and stuff from the united states so a lot of things went over there and and uh it was something that was really special yeah um i mean there was it was 
uh, actually after the release of the Letters from the Labyrinth tour and uh, uh, album from, from TSO and then um, there, you, <laughs> I remember these huge um, animations, like light animations of this tiger in this castle and it was this was so epic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's funny with that stuff, too, because some of those things I had not had a chance to see, obviously, because we didn't see the production in advance. So a lot of what was behind me on that stage, I did not see until I watched video back or if I would turn around, I could see, you know, something moving or flying or there was a gargoyle or something. But they, <laughs> I didn't know what was going to be there because we didn't get a chance to rehearse it with the production at all. So it was... It was a big surprise for me as much as it was for the fans, but it was uh, it was something that was really special. It meant a lot for Sabotage to get back over to Europe, too, because we really had a great relationship with the European fans. And unfortunately, with the way TSO is working with our tour, most of it is November and December, and it's impossible for us to, to do Europe at the same time as we were doing America without putting together an actual third band that would do Europe in November and December. So we made it over to Europe a couple times to do Beethoven's last night tours. And, and uh, it was it was definitely fun to get over there outside of uh, the realm of the, the TSO winter tour and, and just do a regular rock tour with, with TSO over there. Because we did that a few times in America. But, I mean, it took us a long time to get out of that time of the year in America. So for us to uh, to get it together and get over the Europe was something that we were happy to do and we were planning on doing it some more, but unfortunately with the passing of Paul O'Neill, everything's kind of got put into a place now where we're, we're still healing from that, you know, and TSO in a lot of ways was Paul O'Neill, you know, it was like, it was his baby and, and, and we're trying to keep his legacy alive. So we're working on re-releasing, we're not re-releasing, releasing for the first time the TSO records that he'd finished that had never been released like Romanoff and, and, and some other things. And like you said, the, the re-release is out of the old records. So it's it's important for us that people get to hear not only the music that uh, we had released, but the stuff that Paul had written that they never had released yet. So so that, that, that is something you've been working on as well, um, in addition to, the, to preparing for the live shows that now is going to be the streaming event. Yeah, that's, well, unfortunately with that, Though with the way the the COVID thing had hit, we um, weren't doing a lot of traveling to each other to get to the studios. And, you know, some of the singers that work with TSO come from Europe and, you know, Europe and the United States had had bands of coming here and there. So a lot of a lot of what we do was shut down, too. I mean, there there are people that work in the studio with us, like our sound engineer, Dave Whitman, that, you know, he's he's older than us and we're not. 20 anymore so it's like we we wanted to make sure we protect protected everybody that's in, involved in the band so a lot of what we wanted to do in the studio is is being held off until it's safe for everybody to travel and get together in that way i mean this special we're doing we had a, a lot of um work goes into getting people into these you know in the in the ways that they did hockey and and the ways they they did things like that where you have your own little bubble where they they test everybody We tested before we left to rehearse and we waited. And then when we showed up to start rehearsal, we waited and, and hid in our rooms and got tested again. And then once everybody tested positive, we started rehearsal. But we're all still wearing masks and we're all being really safe because um, we all want to go home when this is done and, and see our families for the for the holidays. It'll be my first you know, Christmas home in, in, in 20 years. So I don't I don't want to be having to. Uh, to hide away from uh, my mom because I take care of my mom. So I, I wouldn't want to have to hide from her, you know, scared to hurt her with that. So everybody's being extra careful and, you know, it's difficult. It's uh, in a lot of ways, like I tell people, everything that's going on when we get together to rehearse is exactly the same, but it's completely different. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> it's like different. It's the same time. You, you see all the people, you know, but you're all, And you're playing the music, but you're playing with masks on. <laughs> it's like, well, this is different. So you're playing the same music in the same room with the same people, but it's completely different. So <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely unique, but we're really happy to be doing it because these fans that we see, especially in the United States this time of the year, 
like for us, the TSO band and those fans, they became our family at this time of the year for the holidays. And I know that the fans, TSO was a big part of their holiday celebrations every year. So not being able to tour, we really felt it was important for us to be able to do at least this live stream so we could get into people's homes and be a part of their celebrations that way. Uh, great. Yeah. What, what I actually meant is that there's like plans that you are still, you are as soon as it's working again with the studio um, uh, recordings and stuff, you are, you still have material from Paul yes. um, that yes. you are going to finish uh, to put out there. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's things. The, the first TSO record that was written was Romanoff was that big thing that Paul had called Romanoff. And that to me is one of my favorite pieces he's ever written. And that was never released. It's finished. It's been finished writing, but the actual recording of it into album version was not completely finished. And that's one of the first things that we're working on. So people will get to hear some new old releases from, <laughs> from Paul. You know, in the in the not too distant future, I can't say exact dates right now because I don't know. But as soon as we can get that stuff out, great. Um, uh, two two other things uh, we moved a little bit away from the from the Vakan thing back then. Uh, um, the label, I guess, released this uh, Return to Vakan compilation, and because of this, because this was such a huge production, I was. Always thinking, why why didn't we see a DVD release of that show? Um, so, is there anything you know why this didn't never saw the light of day be beyond the direct TV uh, stream here in Germany? You have to ask Paul that question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing about that because and God rest his soul. But a lot of the things that happen with us were put together by him and mm -hmm. a DVD release and that production would be something that he would have been putting together. And I guess in, in the order of what would be importance of things that we're going to release in the future. I mean, I, I think that that, that video could come out one day. I know there's um some great footage. I mean, I, I believe the whole entire thing was filmed and it's there. So, I mean, I would love to see that, myself just to get a chance to watch the whole entire thing yeah you know because i was there and when sabotage was playing obviously i couldn't watch us play and then it was just a lot of i couldn't see the two stages and i would just love to watch the whole thing as a concert so hopefully one day like i said that that was the kind of question that i would usually be able to have an immediate answer for from paul but um you know when he passed it was really It was like a giant sledgehammer hit us all, you know, because mm -hmm. he was such an important part of all of our lives. He was our our mentor. And, and, and it's just kind of, you know, right now we're still getting past healing for that. You know, it, it's 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 difficult every time we we do this stuff without him because this was his baby. So it's um it's something that hopefully can happen in the future. I mean, luckily, the footage is there and it was something that was very important. And I think the fact that it can never happen again that way. And, you know, Paul was on stage with us and, and some things like that. It's, I think it would be really special to do. So my, my personal hopes would be to see that that could happen. I, I would love that as well. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people. Um, and yeah, another thing is of course that, uh, not too long ago, rumors, uh, uh, came out that I think Al mentioned in a, in an interview, that there is actually a chance of uh, more sabotage again in the future. Um, is there anything you can uh, tell us that uh, you have been talking about amongst yourselves as a band? Well, we always oh. talk about it. We've been talking about this for 20 years. <laughs> I was telling somebody in, a, in another interview that, that, you know, you get a Haley's Comet comes by, every so many years and you get a pandemic comes by every hundred years like this one. And, and, you know, a sabotage new sabotage record may come by in 20 years. So it's like, <laughs> I'm hoping I've been wanting to do it. So we have music written and I know Al talked to John and I talked to John and I'm just talking to John today about it. And it's something we've all 
like to do. And um, I think, you know, certain things we we discovered, not discovered, but when everybody got separated and, and time was kind of set to stand still in 2020, you realize just how important time is, you know, because say we never got out of this. And this was just the way life wound up being, which God forbid it will. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping everything works and we get back to normal life. But I'm saying it makes you realize what you were doing, how special it was to be able to get together and make that music and do those tours. So I think when the opportunity comes now, I think we will, we will, we will my phone, I'm going to shoot it. We, we were jumping on, you know, we, we should jump on the abilities to to do those things. So fingers crossed something like that would, would happen. I think it's time. I think there's a lot of people that would love to hear it that were Sabotage fans. But you have to think as well, too, there are people that were not even born yet that, you know, that are 18 years old now that, that have never had a chance to to see Sabotage here. And it would just be great to, to be able to be a part of, of their lives, too. So I would really love to see it happen myself. I think it would be great if we could. So. I think it would be awesome. Yeah, I was I was lucky enough to see uh, John playing with John Oliva Spain a couple of times here in Europe, and also Zach playing with Circle to Circle. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm still waiting to 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 see sabotage. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's I I love their their solo records and the music that they did, but there's a big difference between when we all get together on that stage and play as sabotage we're uh it's a special unit i see Definitely. a lot of videos show up online that i'd never seen from the, the tours we did in europe there was uh some video i was just watching from from hamburg on the uh dead winter dead tour and some other things and you just watch that and like wow that band really had a a certain thing about it we were <laughs> smiling and joking but we were a badass live band it was a great group it really had a great chemistry and that music is so powerful and, and the fans were so connected to us on that stage it was it was really special and magical and hopefully we could do it again it's actually my my favorite album dead winter dead me too, you know i was told somebody <laughs> that because they're asking about what my favorite sabotage records were for me and and you know obviously because i finally got to tour as a member of the band gutter ballet was very special but all around, I think Dead Winter Dead is a really beautiful piece of music, and it just connected with the fans around the world, I think, in a, in a really special way. And I, I just like that record. It's it's dark, but it's it's powerful and light, and it, it just has every bit of what I like about Sabotage on that album. You know, there's there's so much of the elements in that particular record. And, and in a way, it was also the starting point of, Uh, TSO with Christmas Eve being the one song that kind of uh, um, yeah that was uh, the, the centerpiece of the first TSO album or became to be the centerpiece of the first TSO album right? Yeah well we were down in, in Florida actually rehearsing for the um, European Dead Winter Dead tour that was going to be happening in January of um of 97 i think it was january of 97 or might have been no it might have been january 96 yeah it was january 96 but it, this was still 95 and we're riding around getting to rehearsal and johnny lee came into the rehearsal room and he goes you're not going to believe this i just heard christmas eve sarajevo on mix 96 now mix 96 first of all i don't know why johnny was listening to mix 96 but he was <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about that, but he was listening to this was an adult contemporary, like easy listening channel that had 1224 on it in December for its Christmas music. And it just started to get played over and over again. And the radio station said when normally when a song gets a lot of requests, they would get maybe 20 30 requests from somebody. We were getting three, 400 requests from people to play this song. And that word about that, this guy Mason Dixon, the DJ, and the song got to our record company in New York and a radio station in New York City. And a DJ there named Scott Shannon started playing it. And right in the backyard of Atlantic Records, they were hearing it on the radio all the time. So 
Atlantic knew that there was something very special about that song. Sabotage sold as many records as we possibly could. You know, anything they had printed was shipped out to the stores and went, but the season was over after that, and the song left the radio. So Atlantic and had got together with Paul and are like, we really want to try to sell this song, but we don't know how we can do it under the name of Sabotage. And Paul is like, well, I have trans Orchestra, which he was working on for the Romanoff record, but I, he goes, I have these stories. I have a trilogy of stories for Christmas, and we can put a record around it. So that record was written and done and released in 96 and the rest of that is TSO history that's how it happened I mean TSO was coming but it was going to start in a different way than it did it just got that record written around that song and um it all happened so you know not necessarily fast but it just was was out of the blue that, that everything came together for that the way it did you know and within Five years, TSO was was headlining arenas. It just happened like that in America. Wow, that that was uh, very very um, yeah deep deep insight into the into the history and uh, of TSO now and and into the, <laughs> the foundation of uh, TS, TSO um, coming from Dead Winter Dead. Um, wonderful. Um, yeah, I hope I'm, I'm I hope I will be able to catch the show as well. Um, the streaming show on December eighteenth. 8 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time, right? And yeah, um, we're looking for it. it's it's a little bit uh, difficult to get everybody on the same time, but at least it's not like trying to put together a New Year's Eve one because everybody's got <laughs> everybody's got a different midnight, so it yeah. would be a lot more difficult to go Happy New Year and make it work. So this this is really good, and we're really excited. And everybody just um, you know, be be smart and safe if you're getting together, you know, more. Than just your immediate family and circle in there. Please be safe with with how you're sitting down and getting together. That's why we're not. The reason why we're not touring is so that people can stay safe. So we don't want to have a live stream and have 50 people show up in somebody's house and get everybody sick. You know, so just make sure <laughs> when you're when you're home, you you do the right things and and you know you could test yourselves and do what we did and make sure people are safe to get together and just um. Try to try to keep everybody around you safe and healthy because that's the most important thing to us. We want to be able to see everybody again, and and uh, we're just trying to do something really special for everybody. So just enjoy it in your homes and in, in the safety of your houses, and and we hope everybody has a a, a good time watching it because we're we're having a great time making it, and we think it's going to be something really special. Beautiful, yeah, and it's going to be um, available for people who have tickets uh, for the entire weekend, right? Yes, which is why I get to watch TSO live on Saturday. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to watch a TSO concert. Yeah, it's it's available. There's, there's a lot of people that, that can't watch it the second it happens. Maybe they are in a different country or they're at work, so you're able to purchase it. And if you miss the actual first broadcast of it, it will be available for that weekend with All that right. purchase, that ticket. Perfect. Thank and there's you. A, if you go to tsolivestream.com and or the TSO website, there's a a instruction video that was done where I do the the narrations on how you could properly order it online in case anybody has any trouble. I was <laughs> I enjoyed doing that because I felt like I was telling somebody how to get on a ride at an amusement park. <laughs> my, I had my amusement. I had my theme park voice on, and I was giving people an instruction video on uh on the live stream concert. So something new. All right. Yeah, um all the best with that and um yeah, I'm really curious and 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 can't wait to see what um TSO and Sabotage will be up to in the next months and years to come as we heard there's still material to be that's ready to be recorded. Um yeah, super exciting. Thank you so much for taking the time, Chris. It was no, really really great talking to you. Um Please uh, stay uh, in the line for for a second. Um, for our listeners, as always, I want to thank you for listening. And um, yeah, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. And listen to great music. The Progcast is a production of Stuus Media and is presented by the Prague Space. It is produced by Randy M. Salo, 
Janine Stengel Lewis, Blake Lewis, and Dario Albrecht. Our theme music is by This Is Not An Elephant, and Van Kirsch does our graphics. New episodes of the podcast drop every Monday and Thursday. And don't miss our Friday Top 5 episode where we discuss our favorite new releases from that week. For more interviews and reviews in the written form, check out theprogspace.com.